Thank you, Mom, playing Uno with me. Well, for my mom making popsicles and um, pushing me on a swing, swing. And I'm thankful for my mom for taking me shopping and teaching me how to cook. Mom, thank you for taking care of us. Mom, thank you for taking care of it care of us and loving us. Mom, thank you for encouraging me and always wanting the best for me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you, Mom. Oh, yeah. And you, and Sylvia, and Daddy. Mom, thank you for making me such a big Disney fan and buying me vans. I love you. Thank you for being cutie. Mama, thank you for being cute. Mom, I love it when you play Legos with me. For Mother's Day, I love my mom because she's an awesome mom. Mom, thank you for caring for me and letting me play video games. I love you. Happy Mother's Day because I... Wait, no. No, no, no. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers because they're all so supportive. Mom, I love it when we play cards together. Mom, thank you for helping me feel better when I'm hurt. I love you. Mom, you make me feel cared about when you take care of me when I'm not feeling well. Opal, I'm glad that you are my mom. You don't treat me as a second son. You don't treat me as the another family. You treat me as your family. And it reminds me of this old Jewish proverb that our teacher told us. And it goes like, uh, it's when they didn't know when God had a million eyes, you know? He, they pictured him as one being, one presence. But, so it went like, since God couldn't be everywhere, he invented mothers. And I feel that is one way you have inspired me to come, become better. Mom. Hey everybody, happy Mother's Day. Um, I'm assuming you've probably done something today to honor your mom if she's still with you or remember her if she's already passed away. And I know I'm looking forward to celebrating with my mom this afternoon. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit today just about um, mothering and how that is bearing the image of God. So I want to ask you guys to do something a little different for just a minute. Uh, in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to pause the video, and I want you to think about a time in your childhood when your mom or grandma or aunt or foster mom or some other caregiver took care of you, that a tender memory or a time they nurtured you or cared for you, a special tradition, and then once you have thought of that memory, if you're watching with somebody, share it with them. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. So hopefully you got to hear some stories maybe you had never heard before and just had a good time remembering um, the care that you received as a child. And thinking about this might um, for me this week. I remember my mom, every time I was sick, 
she had this special blanket and she would tuck me in on the couch and I remember having, she'd pour me ginger ale and it'd be next to me and I remember the feeling of her hand on my forehead, you know, like when they check for a fever and just feeling so safe and cared for. So I was asking some friends what their memories are and I heard stories about their mom waiting up for them after their first job when they would get home late and just sitting on the porch and talking and feeling wanted just to have that time together. I heard stories of a mom who, when things got unstable and rough at home with dad, would take the kids out for a drive and play a game and make the best of a really hard situation. And I heard a story of mom who would just sit with their kiddo when they cried and they didn't know why they were crying, but mom would just be with them. And I just got to thinking about all of these memories. And we all have moms that are flawed, right? Moms that, and caregivers, grandmas, aunts, that weren't perfect, but there were these moments that they did care for us. And I think if we as flawed people, broken people, can give those things to our kids and they were given to us, what does that say about God who calls himself our father? who places himself in this parent role. I just am amazed that we get to experience that from humans, even though we're flawed. And God says he is the perfect parent. And he calls himself father throughout scripture. But as I started thinking about this, I remembered um, in Matthew Matthew 23, Jesus compares himself to a mother hen. And um, so if you've seen a hen, they, um, they're they always gathering their, their chicks. And that's what Jesus said he wanted to do like a mother hen. And even when the chicks are rebellious and they keep trying to wander off, he just patiently just keeps gathering them like a hen. And so he compares himself to this very motherly role. And then in Hosea 11, I wanted to read this for you guys because all the characteristics in humanity are found in God. So male and female characteristics that he, God made sure that, um, he wanted us to see that he is all of those things. And so in Hosea 11, starting in um, verse three, It was I who taught Israel to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. So here's this parent taking time to bend down and teach their kid to walk. And this picture of a parent bending down to feed their child, this very tender caring for, this nurturing. So in Genesis then, right in the beginning, in Genesis 2, it says, if I can find it, Genesis 1, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So God is this nurturing, tender parent to us. And he made us in his image. Male and female, he made us in his image. We are image bearers of God. And there is this tender, nurturing side of God, and we see it in the caregivers in our past. And so what I want us to think about is that God revealed his character to us in those caregivers. Because if they're made in the image of God and they took care of us, they were there for us, they made us feel safe and wanted, and they cared for us when we were sick and they nurtured us. That that was the character of God revealed in those caregivers. And so for us to say, that is the way God cares for me. When I was sick on the couch and I felt like my mom has got me, she's going to make sure I'm okay, that that's how God has me. That God is going to nurture me and care for me when I'm ill. Maybe for you it was 
a caregiver who just patiently kept loving you when you were in the bratty season of your life. And to think if we're image bearers of God, that that's how God is patient with us when we're being rebellious. And so if God has made us image bearers, made us to bear his likeness, then it makes me ask the question, what for? Because it's not just um, so that we're like him. Um, We're made for someone. And I want to go back to that Genesis 1 that I just read for you. We're made in the image of God, male and female, he created them. In the very next verse, it says, So God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. So it's amazing to me. So God says, I made you in my image. And the very first words that are recorded that he speaks to us is about our role for the people and world around us. That we are made in his image for others. We have work and good for the world around us. And it is so closely linked to being an image bearer of God. To bear his likeness is for others. And we know this. We see it all through the New Testament. Jesus compares us to salt. And salt, we know, is um, affects everything around it without itself being changed. He compares us to light. And the only reason we know what light is is because um, we experience it, that it gives light for other people. It's not for the light itself. It is to bring light to others. And Paul compares us to that we bear fruit, and we know that fruit isn't for the tree. It is for others. We see it in the Great Commission to go and make disciples. Jesus didn't come to make us image bearers and make us disciples just so that we could um, go up on a mountain and worship him, and that was it. It was to make other disciples, to go into the world around us. And we see it in the great command that we're to love God and we are to love others. So when I think about bearing the image of God as a parent, I think that it's not just for us who have kids, actual biological kids. That if we're created to bear God's image to the world around us, then there are people in my life and your life that may not be related to us, that God is calling us to nurture. It might be your own kids. It might be your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, your neighbors, your neighbor's kids, your friend's kids from school. There are people in your life that as an image bearer of God, you are called to bear his image for, to show them who God is in that nurturing way that we were given. And if we don't, what's at stake is our own fulfillment. Because if that is what we were created for, then we will never find happiness apart from that destiny. If that was the reason that God made us, then we have to bear his image to other people if we're ever going to feel fulfilled. You know, my kids have been home doing distance learning like I'm sure a lot of you guys are. And so I get to learn how to teach math. And we've been doing story problems and we have to write the number model with an unknown, right? So, you know, you have a number plus something equals fulfillment, okay? So it's you plus something is the unknown equals fulfillment. And that unknown is bearing God's image for other people. And I really think that if we miss that piece of the equation, we never get to the fulfillment on the other side. 
And the other thing that's at stake, of course, is people's eternity, their, their eternal relationship with a God who loves them. In 2 Corinthians, Paul tells us that it's been entrusted to us, this ministry of reconciliation. It's been entrusted to us to give this reconciliation to other people. So, what do I want you guys to do? This is what I've been trying to do this week, is think about two things. Think about the image bearers that you had in your life. Think about your mom, your grandma, that caregiver, and spend some time thanking God. Thank you, God, for the way that person made me feel wanted, because I know that was your image. You want me the way that person showed me. So take some time to think about what characteristics of God were revealed for you in those caregivers. And then the second thing is to talk about with someone, who are you bearing the image of God for? Who is it in your circle, in your life, that you're called to bear his image for, to to show his likeness through that nurture? And I would just say to those of you who have pain in this area that your mom or your caregiver maybe just didn't fill a need, didn't make you feel wanted, didn't say good job, whatever it is. And every year on Mother's Day, you just feel that pain in that pit. You read the Hallmark cards and it's just tears you up because you didn't have that. I just want to encourage you to talk to God and a friend about that or a counselor that, God, this hurts and I should have had that and I didn't. To resolve that pain and then turn around and give that to someone else. Give that to the people around you. If your mom didn't say good job and that just wounded you to this day, you have an opportunity to turn around and give that to someone else. In Hosea um, 2, God promises that he would turn your valley of trouble into a door of hope. And it's not just hope for you, but it's hope for the people around you. So wherever you're at in your relationship with God, in your relationship with others, wrestle with who are you bearing his likeness for? Because it's for somebody. And on the other side of that, is their reconciliation and it's your fulfillment. Thanks for tuning in.